So let's imagine that we have uh, two wheels of mass m and radius r such that uh, they can rotate about some point here. So we can imagine that there's a metal rod or something and there's no friction and the wheel can rotate. And there's another one here and we have a string that connects to objects, so the string cannot slide. So this is, you can sort of think of this as a table, and we have these two pulleys here, but the string cannot slide because there's friction, and we have two objects of mass m and say 2m, and so clearly there will be rotation this way. And so we want to find the, let's say, the, the linear acceleration of this object here. So, of course, there's only one linear acceleration, so it would be the same as this one. This one will accelerate upwards, this one accelerates downwards. Um, but, <clears throat> so these are all m. m. M, that's also m. And so we have four systems, uh, m times a, equals f, which in this case is t, uh, t1 minus mg, right? So t1 is the tension upwards here, and mg is the force this way. On this one, instead, we have 2ma is equal to, let's call this tension here t3, and it's that way, which is this way, so it's opposite of t1, so this is a minus t3. And so the force of gravity here, which is 2mg, needs to come in positive. 2mg, opposite of the force over here, because it's pulling in a different direction, right? It's really a one-dimensional system. And so there's really a left and a right. And so to the right is, uh, is uh, positive, and to the left is negative. So now we have to deal with these two objects. So it's I alpha equals torque. The rotational analog of ma equals f. So we have a uh, moment of inertia m r squared over 2 for this one times the angular acceleration, which is related to the linear acceleration by alpha equals a over the radius. So we have uh, the angular acceleration is a over r, and that's going to equal to the torque. And there are two torques, right? So these are the forces acting here, and the force of gravity, which is acting at the center of mass, they don't produce torques about this point. So we have a torque which is due to T1, which is in that direction, and that's negative. So we have a minus T1R, and then we have a torque due to this tension, which we can call T2, T2 times R. And so that's the sum of torques on this object, and now we have this object, which is same moment of inertia, m r squared over 2, a over r, and that's going to equal to a torque which is that way, which is negative, due to t2, so we have a minus t2r, and we have a plus t3 times r, and that's the system of equations. So uh, now we want to solve that system of equations, and so we want to get rid of the tension so we can solve for the acceleration a, the acceleration appears here, so we can do some simplification. Uh, but it's ultimately, we want to get rid of tension, so we have to multiply these equations by r, because we see that we have t's times r's, we want them to cancel. So let's do m a r equals t 1 r minus m g r, and 2 m a r equals minus t 3 r plus 2 m g r. And then here we have, we'll just simplify, we have m uh, r times a, let's just write the a first, one factor of r cancels, so m a r over 2 is equal to minus t1 r plus t2 r, and the last one has uh, m a r over 2 equals minus T2R plus T3R. And so um, 
let's add all these equations together, right? We have a T1R here, and we have a minus T1. So let's add this to this to this. Uh, T1R uh, minus T1R cancels the T2R is here, and there's minus T2R, and there's a minus T3R, and T3R. So all of those cancel. So the right-hand side has a 2MGR minus MGR. So we just have an M. Gr on the left hand side we have um, we have mar two mar uh, mar two and mar two so this is an mar so we have two three four mar and so a uh, is going to be g over uh, four right, if we do that right we cancel the, the m and the r and we have just g over four. So that's the acceleration of this object downward. Of course, it's the acceleration upward of that one, and these have angular accelerations related to that um, divided by r.